I have been hoping that I would happen upon this book in the wild for months, but today I wait no longer. Barnes and Noble's family. A novel of high fantasy and low stakes. I'm ready. After a lifetime of bounties and bloodshed, Viv is hanging up her sword for the last time. The battle-weary orc aims to start fresh, opening the first ever coffee shop in the city of Thune. But rivals old and new stand in the way of success, not to mention the fact that no one has the faintest idea of what coffee actually is. If Viv wants to put the blade behind her and make her plans a reality, she won't be able to go it alone. But the true rewards of the uncharted path are the travelers you meet along the way. And whether drawn together by ancient magic, a flaky pastry, or a freshly brewed cup, they may become partners, family, and something deeper than she could have ever dreamed. Oh my god, I love this emblem so much. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> All right, quick check of how long the prologue is. Ah, just like a page. <laughs> Viv buried her great sword in the scalver's skull with a meaty crunch. Black blood thrummel in her hands and her muscular arms strained as she tore it back and out in a spray of gore. The scalver queen gave a long vibrating moan and then thundered to the stone in a heap. The life of fighting that she's leaving behind in the prologue. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> It was time for something new, but also, look at this. It's so cute. Okay, we're going to be very careful in how we check, but. <gasps> A cinnamon bun. Oh my god. Well, that is precious. <sighs> I love everything about this. <sighs> okay, okay, we're here. Chapter one. Uh, the dog ear. Oh, dog ear. Dog ear. Dog ear. Dog ear. <laughs> I absolutely love the way so far that the passage of time is illustrated. Inhaling the moist morning scent of shadows giving way to sun. And then over here, Viv buys like a bushel of apples. And Viv was on her last apple. Like it's just the perfect way to showcase it. Yeah. So Viv as a character is already precious. I love that she had this real tough exterior and like old life that she's running behind from and then when she's telling Cal about her plans for her coffee shop getting all like flustered and embarrassed and like like knowing that she doesn't need to be so but still is I'm excited to see her convert everyone into being coffee fans I cannot wait page 31 to 32 Hefting a pry bar, she levered up the lid, and there inside was a set of muslin sacks. The scent was even stronger now, and Viv shivered in anticipation. Untying one, she dug a hand into it and let the roasted brown beans sift through her fingers. She loved the quiet hiss they made as they fell back into the bag. Hmm, you're right. Not much like tea. Emerging from her reverie, Viv glanced up at him. You can smell it, though, can't you? Like roasted nuts and fruit. Cal squinted at her. Thought you said you drank it. Viv nibbled one experimentally, tasted the warm, bitter, dark flavor as it coated her tongue. She felt she needed to explain. They grind it into powder and then run hot water through it, but there's more to it than that. When the machine shows up, I'll show you. God's the smell of it, Cal. This is just a ghost of it. The description of all the coffee is wonderful. I adore it. Also, the confusion from everyone else is just so perfect. Later in the same scene, well, he said, look me apologetic. If you find nobody wants any of the beans and water, at least you can feed them. <laughs> beans and water. True. When Viv is talking to her neighbor, Viv glanced sidelong at Lainey's mug of tea. Say, you ever have coffee? She asked. Lainey blinked at her and looked affronted. 
Why, I never have. And the way I was brought up, a lady doesn't talk about her maladies, she said primly. Ziv barked a laugh to the old woman's great annoyance. I just, the intermix of um, humor in with the descriptions of the coffee and just this fantastical setting is so wonderful. One of the things I find most interesting though is that this has a lot more little scenes than other books. You can see the little daggers. I talked about the way that I thought this author does a great job of passing time in scenes, um, but this does the same thing. In fact, this tiny one says, When Viv retired for the night, black blood rested on those brackets, a killing slab. She wished it was still hidden in the corner. Very interesting. Just a little snippet. I personally really love it, and I'm excited because I'm now at a place where Cal's about to try the coffee. <laughs> Cheers, Cal. Mm. that it is Cal's idea. Oh, it's so cute. Then it's tea. It's in moments like these up till now that I realize that Travis's audiobook narration really helps with how he writes. There were a lot of other ways he could have phrased this, like until now up until now you know just different ones but up till now is incredible and you don't often see unless it's within dialogue someone using it like that but it flows so much better and so there's just been several instances where i'm like it it, it reads like someone is narrating it and i love that so much <sighs> i'm not even 100 pages in but it has lived up to the hype. dog eared so many pages but like oh my god we're of course in the like gathering the team section it, it is incredible not only do we have tandry who's becoming a like main main character which is so fun but now we have amity the house cat the giant house cat oh, everything i could want we have a thimble who i have like this momentary like love affair where i'm like well this is my new favorite character every time but Thimble, Thimble's gonna be the baker who is obsessed with coffee. The ratkin shifted from foot to foot and stared longingly at the coffee machine. Coffee first, he pleaded. That is how I feel every day. Coffee first, please. Oh, my heart. I feel like this is a book that I'm like struggling not to finish. That sounds weird. Like I'm trying not to go too quickly with it. I'm trying to savor it like my espresso martini. It's just that good. I want to melt into this world. Oh my God, 
thimble made cinnamon rolls. I want a cinnamon roll so bad now. I might have to make some tomorrow. <laughs> Let's see. It's one of these dog ear pages. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Soft bread wound in a spiral with dark sugar and cinnamon nestled between the rings and a thick, creamy glaze frosted the top and dripped down the side. Yum. That's all I want to do is eat and drink while I read this book. And I want to be at Legends and Lattes Cafe so badly. But we're building the conflict so well too. Like I had a full chuckle at the character, I'm not remembering his name right now, who just is there to like study the ley lines. <laughs> doesn't want to buy anything, doesn't like coffee, cracking me up just thinking about the number of people who go to coffee shops to use their Wi-Fi and like don't buy anything. We have him doing the ley lines. We have someone from Tandry's past. We don't know how much Tandry knows about the ley lines. Ooh, we have multiple people from Viv's past and we have like this mob boss guy and all of it is just like slowly sprinkled in. The only complete event so far, quite quite literally the only one, is that Viv had someone from her past come up and like the literal next scene, Tandra had someone from her past and could that have been spaced out a little bit differently? Yeah, I think so, but that's like the stupidest nitpick, but again, just <laughs> I, this poor book is just getting so much love. <sighs> mm, cheers. Cheers to my new favorite read. <laughs> I am a little bit nervous about her lower back complaining again and again. I'm fascinated to see how that shakes out. As Viv is expanding their menu, I think it's time to expand mine with some cold brew. And some chocolate milk. <laughs> okay, so I don't know why it's taken until now for me to notice, um, but whoever designed these, you know, seems to be a genius because they do actually relate to the exact chapter. Um, so we have a lute, a little instrument, and then later in the chapter, Pendry comes in uh, asking if he can play in there. Which was very cute. Poor Pendry running out, not being able to produce. things at the door. Just producing not musical, not unmusical noise. But in chapter 12 is when we get the cinnamon rolls too. So now chapter 14 looks like some bread. I'm just kind of like guessing at what it's gonna be. And then chapter, ooh, okay. Chapter 15's a book. I don't need to get ahead of myself. I just thought it was interesting, so. Hmm. I'm excited. Now I'm gonna be guessing before each chapter what's about to happen or which new character we're about to be introduced to. So, oh, I cannot wait. Mm. They were thin blitz. Crunchy nut and fruit delicacies, which before Viv tried them, she described as, they smelled nice but resembled sad little slices of bread that hadn't risen. Like little biscotti and you get to put them in your drink. Little thimblets. Am I going to start calling biscotti thimblets now? Yes. Also, are you a content little sausage? Thank you, yes. <laughs> also, he did one of my favorite things here where you describe an action or basically an action is understood through someone's continued dialogue. So she dug out four sovereigns and handed them over. And for your time, no, don't hand one back. I love that sort of thing. It's like when, you know, characters are arguing and someone's had like this really long monologue and is like, wait, come back here. And so you just know that that other character stormed off. Love it. Love when it is used effectively. And Zelda is loving all of this attention. Can I go outside? The squirrel is just taunting Buffy. <laughs> I guess they're ready to go inside. <laughs> okay. I think that those are ice cubes. So we might be getting another addition to 
the menu, which I'm excited about. Cheers. <laughs> I was right, yes! <laughs> okay, we have a name for the old man playing chess against himself. One of the things I think this book does exceptionally well is just continuing to add like little questions. Again, because it says the stakes are low on the back, they're not, you know, earth shattering questions, but it's just like, who is this old man playing chess and how is he moving the pieces? And we now have more questions now that we know a little bit about him as he technically said, but didn't answer. And there's just so many elements where you have little, little bits of questions that keep coming up because my least favorite thing, and I've read it before in some published books, but also when I'm reading friends books, beta reading for them, I've had instances where I'm like 70% of the way through just before we're about to get to another twist. And I'm like, okay, but I don't have any more questions. Like literally everything's been answered. This little old gnome is, is gonna just stay in the back of my head until we get to the end and get maybe a better answer. So, hmm, mm. No. Oh, you making biscuits on the pillow. Yeah. I have all of them with me. You gonna read? <laughs> I'm just continually awed by how pleasant this book is. The meeting with the magical, amazing. I really enjoyed that the cinnamon rolls were the answer. Like I just, it's, it's very sweet um, and charming. Maybe that's really the perfect word for this book. It is so charming. I do think I'm gonna have to make cinnamon rolls after this. Every time I read about them, they are calling to me. Yes, Biv. Yes. Oh, oh, this scene is so cute. Again, I love the little attention to detail. Like we mentioned the birds a couple times, um, like when they land and then as they're looking out, they can hear them. And then Tantri's surprise laughed, startled the birds from the cherry trees. And it's just like, oh, so perfect. I was so in the zone as I was reading this that I did not have any commentary, but we got a kiss and we have everyone rallying around Viv and it's just very sweet. So sweet. They're rebuilding. And I think this means the scales are balancing out, but oh. Oh my God. Ugh. What flames could not consume never shall be extinguished. <sighs> and the traveling bugs, ah! This might be the first time it's the same one. Interesting. <laughs> but also, we're nearing the end and there's still quite a bit more pages left. So I don't know how that's going to go, but we'll see. Oh my God, it's so sweet. I think I'm going to cry. <laughs> they have equal partnership. Oh. One for each of you. This shop isn't mine, it's yours too. You built it, you made it work, and it'd be nothing without you. All you have to do is sign. Uh, all of them. <laughs> oh my god, okay, so epilogue, acknowledgements, not very long. And then the best surprise of all, <gasps> a short story at the end? Like, that makes sense then with these extra pages, because I was like, what on earth? <laughs> oh my gosh, how fun is that? <laughs> Okay, that blocked very satisfying. Also, so cool that uh, this was a nano novel, and then just getting to hear about like the success after the fact with so many different people championing it. This was such a fun acknowledgement section. Um, I am going to save this pages to fill uh, after I go to the grocery store to get ingredients for cinnamon rolls. <laughs> a still of me enjoying my cinnamon rolls. Unfortunately, for some reason, all of the video that I took that day just like corrupted, cannot be played. However, those cinnamon rolls live on 
in my memory. They were so good. I think Thimble would be really proud. <laughs> I took them up to St. Louis with me and my brothers enjoyed them. I'm just saying like 10 out of 10, actually 100 out of 10. This book was incredible. I actually got my partner to read it. So he's listening to it right now in audio and was just introduced to Thimble. And it's just so fun because we were talking about how each time there's an additional new character that adds something and adds this just like loveliness to the story. And you keep thinking like, surely there can't be more to like, I feel like the Grinch when its heart grows. <laughs> and you keep thinking like, it cannot grow larger. There is so much love here. And and somehow it does. This book was just so good. Ugh. And despite saying that I would read the pages to fill like little short story, I haven't. And I think part of that is because I don't want it to end. I know that doesn't make sense, but in my head, it's like, if there's still a story there, I can still hop back into this world and it's like not done. Like part of me is just still living here. Does that make sense? I, for the longest time, did not watch the final seasons of Parks and Rec or Psych, two of my favorite rewatch shows, because I just, I just didn't want it to end. I didn't want there to be a conclusion. And so that's how I feel with this. <laughs> there was nothing I didn't like. Does that make sense? Like it was just so comforting, so beautiful. And actually my friend Jess recommended a couple books in this vein, like this one that I got from the library. So this was Ever After. There's also Perception Check and Can't Spell Treason Without Tea. Like there's a lot that I'm just excited to delve more into this sort of genre. It truly managed to combine all of my favorite things in one. And I think it's going to become a reread book for me. Supposedly Travis is coming out with a prequel. So maybe when the prequel comes out, I will finally read the short story at the end. But that's gonna be it for me. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have not picked up your copy of Legends and Lattes, I cannot recommend it enough. If you don't like coffee, like a warm, a warm tea, a warm apple cider, whatever makes you feel like coffee makes me feel. And please do let me know what that is. What gives you the cozy vibes? Is it a slightly rainy day, curled up in a blanket inside, hearing a little gentle thunder roll from far away with a good book and, and a cup of coffee? Because that would be mine. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you very soon with a new video. Bye.